the overwhelming power of nature. Floods, storms, rising sea levels. Climate change is already altering the face of our planet. Freak weather is no longer out of the ordinary. It's becoming the norm. Our planet's ice is melting, and that changes everything. Seas will rise, cities could be submerged, and millions may die. There won't be any area near the coast that won't be hit hard. It's inevitable that we're going to lose everything at the coast. Now, we separate fact from fiction to discover the real science behind climate change and the melting ice caps. Global warming, it's a term we hear all the time. But behind the familiar words is a frightening reality. Our planet is warming up, and the effect on Earth's ice caps is catastrophic. As temperatures go up, the ice is melting. Sea levels are beginning to rise. Around the world, ocean levels are increasing twice as fast as they were 150 years ago. In 2005, 77 cubic miles of ice from Greenland and Antarctica melted into the sea. For comparison, the city of Los Angeles uses about one cubic mile of fresh water per year. This is global meltdown. In 2001, scientists predicted that sea levels would rise by three feet by the end of the century. That's a big rise, enough to affect more than 100 million people worldwide. But now researchers like Bill McGuire, professor of geohazards, worry that the predictions might be wrong. The official scenarios for sea level rise, if you like to call them that, were published in 2001 and they were based on research that was undertaken in, in the years running up to that. So they are completely out of date now. Even conservative estimates predicted that over the next 60 years, rising seas would destroy a quarter of all the houses within 500 feet of America's coast. Recent research paints a more disturbing picture. Sea levels could rise as much as 20 feet by the end of the century. It's a bleak, even terrifying vision. But this is what scientists believe meltdown could do to us all. To understand what will happen when the ice melts, scientists need to study the processes driving the meltdown. Advanced modern technologies can reveal our planet's ancient history. By studying how things have changed in the past, they hope to predict our future. Sea level rise is nothing new. We know that in the ancient past, sea levels have been both higher and lower than they are today. It's a natural cycle, driven by the melting and freezing of the polar ice caps throughout Earth's four and a half billion year history. When the ice caps melt, they release water into the ocean. When they freeze, they take it out again. Earth's climate alternates. There are ice ages when the temperature drops and the ice caps freeze and expand. And there are interglacial periods when the ice caps melt and release water back into the oceans. The cause of the cycle is the Earth's rotation around the sun. Earth's orbit around the sun varies in a number of complex ways. The most important is that it changes shape. It's not always a circle. Through a cycle lasting about 100,000 years, the orbit goes from being almost round to being stretched into an oval shape, then back again in the more elliptical orbit, we travel millions of miles further away from the sun. Less sunlight reaches the Earth, and an ice age is born. Right now, our orbit is circular, not elliptical, and we are in a warmer interglacial period. But something is wrong. The ice is melting too fast. One of the places where that melting is running out of control is Greenland. Greenland, covering an area of 836,000 square miles, with ice of an average thickness of nearly one and a half miles. Greenland contains 600,000 cubic miles of ice, and it's melting. 
Professor Conrad Steffen's job at the University of Colorado is to figure out what's wrong with the glaciers before it's too late. We came first here on the Greenland Ice Sheet in 1990, where we set up a permanent camp on the ice, and the main objective was to measure the climate. Each year, Stefan treks across Greenland, checking his remote weather stations. These beam data via satellite to his computers at Colorado. The news isn't good, and it's getting worse. Since 1990, the average winter temperatures in Greenland have risen by 46.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The Greenland ice sheet loses 275 billion gallons of water every 40 hours as icebergs crash into the Atlantic. Ten years ago, the melting rate was just a third of this. At Jakobshaven in western Greenland, Scientists have tracked the movement of this glacier's edge since records began in 1850. Over the past 150 years, the edge has retreated 37 miles. That's bad. But what's worse is that the retreat is getting faster. The glacier is now disappearing twice as fast as it was five years ago. Every day, this glacier pushes icebergs into the ocean that is sufficient to give fresh water used for the town of New York for one year. Almost all the glaciers in Greenland that are south of the Arctic Circle have speeded up their discharges into the ocean. Glacier melting is nothing unusual. Their edges melt all the time, but normally the ice they lose at the edges is balanced by the amount of snow that falls on top. The snow compacts into new ice so the glacier grows in the higher regions and melts at the edge. Scientists call this mass balance. Glaciers gain as much ice as they lose. This natural balance keeps the ice cap stable and sea level rise in check. For the past 10,000 years, that's how it's been. Our ice caps have been stable. But now the balance is off. The edges of Greenland's glaciers are melting faster than the rest can grow. Greenland's losing 20% more mass than it gains from new snowfall each year. If this continues, as the balance shows, we are losing more mass. And this is what we actually discovered. This is happening right now. We are losing currently about 50 cubic miles. Can this be sustained? No. If it continues like this, Greenland ice sheet will lose mass every year by a certain amount and the sea level will rise. Premeditated. Self-defense. Sexually motivated. Hunger for human flesh. Nat Geo Wild investigates six shocking unsolved cases to find out what drove these animals to become man killers. Brand new Hunter Hunted on Nat Geo Wild. The brand new series of animal inspectors. If it weren't for these guys, a lot more waifs and strays would be roaming the street. They're Auckland's boys in blue. The emergency service to those animals who've lost their way. Reuniting lost pets with their owners and giving the more unfortunate ones a second chance for a better life. Animal Inspectors, part of Animal SOS on Nat Geo Wild. They're coming and multiplying at phenomenal rates. These alien killers inhabit the most unlikely places and grow stronger in numbers. Mankind must intervene before their fellow predators are wiped out by their very existence. 